Welcome to PADT, Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies, where we make innovation work through simulation, product development, and rapid prototyping. As an ANSYS certified elite channel partner, we sell and support the full suite of ANSYS tools across six states. Our headquarters is in Tempe, Arizona, and we have offices near Salt Lake City, Utah, Los Angeles, California, Denver, Colorado, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. In addition, we provide training, mentoring, and simulation consulting with these ANSYS tools worldwide. Hey everyone, this is Manoj with PADT. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a two-way connection between SOLIDWORKS and HFSS. So here we are in SOLIDWORKS, where you can see that I've brought in a circular patch antenna model. Now, what we've done in the past, if you wanted to iterate through designs, is actually to manually modify the design within SOLIDWORKS. So maybe you would come to the sketch, come into the sketch and change a dimension from, in this case, let's go from four millimeters down to, let's say, 3.5 millimeters. And once we've done that, we regenerate the model, save the model, either as a SOLIDWORKS file or even a step file, and then import that into ANSYS to do a subsequent analysis. Well, that takes a lot of effort if you're trying to investigate several different design iterations. So what I'm gonna show you today is a new approach uh, that allows you to create a two-way connection. The first step is to go to the sketch and tag certain dimensions that you're interested in or that are key for your design and tag them with a specific name. As you can see here, the critical thing here is to give it a capital DS underscore name and I've given it ID1 as my expression. And I can do that for as many dimensions as I want. So here we do the OD of the circular patch antenna, OD1, uh, and maybe even the height um, of this uh, segment here as well. So again, ds underscore height. And what that will do is it'll tell ANSYS that I want to modify these. Now let's talk about an extrusion, however. So in this case, I have that uh, patch antenna extrusion of 0.05 millimeters. Now let's say I want to modify that. I want to vary that thickness. I can right click on the feature, go to configure feature, Go to open this arrow, and once I checkbox that in, I will see a D1, which I can replace with, again, the capital DS underscore thickness. And now that variable will also be able to be changed within the ANSYS world. So go ahead and hit Save. And then you can go to Tools, ANSYS 18.1, and open ANSYS Workbench. Now, for those of you that have used HFSS standalone, don't worry. Uh, operating HFSS through Workbench is identical. A workbench just offers extra functionality, like in this particular case, doing this two-way connection. So I'm going to link the geometry to HFSS. Once that's done, HFSS will import the geometry all the way from SOLIDWORKS. And again, this is because of Workbench. We'll double-click on Geometry to open up Electronics Desktop, and Workbench will import the geometry from SOLIDWORKS and transfer it all the way through Electronics Desktop, and HFSS will now open, as you can see here. So I'm going to orient the windows just to make things a little bit clearer for everyone to see. So here we will have SOLIDWORKS on the left side and then we'll have HFSS on the right. So the first thing we're going to do is right click on geometry and go to properties. There we will see a parameters tab and when we go to that tab we'll see the DS underscore expressions that we were able to define using SOLIDWORKS. We can pick any one of them. In this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and choose the DS underscore ID1. And instead of 3.5 millimeters, I'm going to give it 2 millimeters. I'm going to click Apply and then OK. And you'll notice that there's now a lightning bolt next to the geometry. If I right click, I can choose Send Parameters and Generate. And what happens is you see on the left is the SOLIDWORKS model has changed. And now the HFSS model also has refreshed. This is the power of the two-way connection between SOLIDWORKS and HFSS. You're able to not only bring in a native part or assembly file, but bring them in with dimensions tagged as parameters, which you can modify from within HFSS itself, saving the time of having to manually go through design iterations using several CAD models within SOLIDWORKS for a design of experiment study. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can jump on our website at padtinc.com or give us a call at 1-800-293-PADT or send us an email at support at padtinc.com.